All right, guys, we have a walk-in cooler, or maybe I should say a roll-in cooler. Let's go take a look and see what's going on. Having problems with your cooler? <laughs> is it empty? Yeah. You guys might think this is a little odd looking. Can you guess what it is? So, there's another one there. So, that one seems to be working though. So we got stuff in it? Okay. Can you fit two in there? Three. Three, three in that one? And three in that one over there? Yep. So it's just got a little unit up there. Is it running at all or what's it doing? No, I got my now. It's only getting down to like 67. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, just a normal unit, nothing special. Yeah, it don't get down very cold at all. Yeah, we'll take a look at it and see what's going on. Ooh, look at that. The fan doesn't want to spin. That kind of makes it a little interesting. Real hard one, huh? Probably was overheating there. I don't know if my universal motor will fit in that little turret or not. It's a pretty good size, uh, or pretty little motor. Looks like it's been more done before. It, uh, a uh, refrigerant cap there. I guess this was replaced not too long ago. We'll go ahead and get that motor out of there. I'm gonna just tell you right now that ain't right, so. Put the extension on there so you can get down in there like that. You gotta be creative sometimes. I'm telling you that's a lifesaver. They don't give you an ounce of extra room here on this thing. Well, that was pretty easy, huh? And boom, there it is. So that one should fit in there just fine. Let's see if we can get this cleaned up a little bit. It's a little bit dirty. If that tells you what we're working with. So we got the uh, fan blade all pretty. It's ready for prime time. You want to save yourself problems later. Good idea to tape that together. Otherwise, it may gravity might pull it apart. Now you could always split the two wires and then run a wire tie through it. But I don't like doing that if we don't need to. Let's go. Thirty-seven already. What's the uh, temp over there? Forty-seven already. Good grief! Well, it uses the expensive stuff. We're about an eighteen degree evaporator. Don't get much better than that. So, not 
too bad. It's got a TXV here. Theoretically, we could check the actual sub cooling on it, but yeah, it's coming back cold there. That's the uh, suction line. So, we got a loop down there to uh, drain off any uh, condensation and stuff. Yeah, you can see the loop down there in the very bottom. So, yeah, simple little call, nothing major going on here, but seems like it's uh, working good. On to the next one. All right, today we got us a cooler here that's not wanting to cool. And as you can see, it's got quite a few issues here. It's been uh, living a hard life, as you can tell. But they said it uh, wasn't wanting to cool at all. So I have a feeling it's probably going to be low on refrigerant because it looks like I've had to add before to it. down here to the back. Pressure tab, I added one to it. I wrote that it held 10 ounces of 34A. That was six years ago, so. Um, here's why we use filters. That helps keep it a little clearer, cleaner. You're not supposed to, according to True, but that's a lot easier than spending all day cleaning it out, so. Uh, that definitely didn't help him much. So what I've done is it was over there on the cook line. And the first thing I did is I drug it over here to the side. That way I'm out of the guy's way. And then I can work on this thing without uh, being in their way and having people spill stuff on us. But sometimes that's not always an option. But in this case here it was, so that's what I did. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and see what uh, feels warm, what's hot, what's cold, what's going on. And then... Uh, Kind of go from there and we'll check the suction pressure if we need to and see if it's uh, somewhere in the normal range. Nothing's kicking on. That ain't good. So I don't think anything's running. I can feel some vibration, but that uh, nothing appears to be happening there. I hear it clicking. Huh. This thing is a little wore out. So you notice that my compressor's not running, neither is my condenser fan. Let's get this opened up here and take a better look at it. Alright, so what's going on here? Make sure we don't get shocked. Fan spins free, so I don't think it's got anything to do with it being seized up. Okay, for the tube, looks like it's been pulled out. Looks original, though. We don't usually use these type of filters. Oil looks pretty clean, that's a good thing. I'm gonna check and make sure we got power to this thing. God knows, probably don't have issues. They probably got issues with that plug over there. All right, so now I got my ear in here. I can feel and hear the fan running. So there's a good chance our thermostat's junk. So gonna unplug it, jump it, see what happens. We do have the power off. Probably not a good idea to do it live, just work something out. Usually you can pull these out through the front, but this one does not appear to be the case. Just go ahead and undo this thing, take it apart, and just tear into it. it Here, somebody's already bent the piss out of this.
tell if that was undone or just pulled apart when I pulled it out. You can see the fan motor's been replaced once before. Make sure that sensor's in the coil like it's supposed to. That might have came undone, it's hard to say. I'm gonna plug it in like that and see if it comes on. And then uh, we can see if it works or not. Looks to me like it's running, so it looks like all those yeah. terminals came off. Now the question is, did it really fall off on its own? What caused it to happen? So I hate to just walk away and what we can do here. Since this thing's already bent to hell. Um, go ahead and undo the fan here. I do not recommend doing this while it's live like I'm going to do. But what we're going to do is see if this thing gets cold enough that it basically trips the uh, thermostat to shut itself off. That'll tell us at least that it the thermostat is reacting, it may not be accurate, but it'll at least tell us that it's shutting off. So let's watch it for a minute and see if it turns off. That uh, generally will shut off somewhere around 18 degrees, 19 degrees area, because it's sensing coil temperature. So let's see what it does. This thing should shut off here though. A lot of times with it just holding 10 ounces of refrigerant, I find it to be easier to pull the refrigerant out and just weigh it back in. Um, you could add maybe an ounce or two or three at a time, but then you always kind of wonder, am I overcharged? Am I under still? That's why I just find it for less than a pound. It's hardly worth screwing with and wasting a lot of time on it, but that's my own personal opinion. Uh, you could also do a scan for leaks too while we're at it, which it's definitely getting pretty cold on that suction line here. We're gonna go ahead and let this run for a little longer. I'll let you know as soon as it trips or doesn't trip. We'll give it a couple minutes. All right, so we stuck the thermometer in there. We're at uh, 13 degrees and dropping. None of these thermostats go down to 13 degrees and shut off. So basically I can turn it down some. Let's see whether or not it does a shut off. It did just there. Now how much further do we got? Just that much. So their thermostat is definitely likely massively out of calibration, might be sticking. So they need a new thermostat. Also, I have a cure, uh, I'm kind of curious on the refrigerant charge if it's off by a little bit. So I'm gonna tell them we need to replace the thermostat and see what, uh, what they wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it and wire that fan back up, but that thermostat's definitely an issue. It should have shut off. Five's the normal setting, and it should have shut off. All right, so we put the fan back in, and it warmed up above you know, the 38, 39 degree mark, and basically the fan is running. As you can see, suction pressure is right in there about 20 pounds. So pressure don't look too horribly bad for, you know, as warm as it is so it's uh, probably fairly okay on refrigerant thermostat like i said is most likely out of whack it could be sticking here and there or just maybe one of those leads came off but means it didn't uh, shut off when it was turned to, to the mid position which usually is around that 18 19 degree mark uh, makes me feel a little uneasy about it so we're checking on to see if we got one if not i'll probably put it back together since this is a friday and the weekend's here so they can at least have something better than nothing. And they could always unplug it at nighttime and let it fall out if, if for some reason it's not shutting off. All right, so we went and picked one up. Got that ready to go. Got to pull this thing out. And get this thing changed out. Tighten that up so that it won't fall off like it did the last time. This 
just nice and straight. Let's suck it back in there. It appears it went in there from what it feels like. Can't hardly feel a whole lot of anything in particular, but to get that done with the little room we got here. Zero to the right. I don't know how you want to put that out. You can put it like that. So just stick that through like that. This is a buyer fryer, so you're almost wasting your time to clean any of this stuff up. So we'll wipe it down some, but nothing gets taken. Nothing gets cleaned up. So we'll set that thing at a number five. You can see the pointy thing right there. All right, like I said, we got the new filter in there. Get everything back together. Everything seems to be working right. If you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, you know what to do. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.